There you go. Thank you. We get a little signature there for you. Appreciate it. This is a unicorn. It's a mystical, one of a kind creature in the forest of Gainesville. And somebody out there wants high, high end apartments and they want it right here for some reason. That's what we're up against. The jam actually started as a hobby between myself and two of my friends. Just a little fun project to help pay the rent on the remainder of a lease, which would be the last contractual lease this space would ever have. No money, no business plan, no experience, and very briefly after we started, we were on a month-to-month -month lease. Any business person out there would cringe if you told them that you wanted to try to run a legitimate business on a month-to-month -month lease. They would probably laugh at you and be like, don't even try that. And at the time, we had a very amateur setup. We didn't have a lot of PA gear. And then within a month or two, a lot of the local bands started coming to us and, and requesting the opportunity to put on a show here. We never really had any expectations. And I think part of that is what makes it a little bit magical because we didn't come into this with a big business plan. We just kind of did something that we did for fun and because we loved it and because we loved our people. And that cocktail, I guess, I guess it worked. There have been a couple bands that have definitely used the jam as their, their launch pad, so to speak. Uh, Locochino, Flatland, they recently won a competition, which was fantastic, uh, which was a feather in my cap, just because two local bands that have been incubated here won a national competition out of six, six slots, I think, in the entire country, 800 people entered, and two of six came from Gainesville and started in the jam. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of that. I like that a little bit. The Jamily is a word that I didn't necessarily like at first. I thought it was a little exclusionary. I thought it kept some people out. But it's really the opposite because at the end of the day, anyone that comes here and they feel the, ex, you know, there's a kind of acceptance and openness about our venue, especially on World Wednesdays uh, with the local crowd. At this point, it's become a definitive part of what the jam is, is the jamily. And now when you talk to people, you just have to say, you say the word and they know what you're talking about. And there's a distinct group and community in town that know they're a part of it and are proud to be a part of it and have taken the jam and our culture and kind of run with it. And I think that's a signal that you're doing something right when people take things and they make more of it than what you even intended to do in the first place. So, I'm, I'm a jamly member now, I think. Nationally known artists that have come through the jam would include Michael Minnert, The Main Squeeze, The Original Whalers, Dope Pod, The Heavy Pets, Pato Bantan, you can't forget about him. At first, hosting artists like that was really intimidating. The original Whaler show was the first time that I saw the backyard completely packed full of people. It felt pretty triumphant. It was it was one of those like movie moments where I don't I don't know how to describe it other than that it was just a fantastic feeling to overcome so many obstacles and have challenged ourselves and had and, and win. Yeah, it's more than a music venue. It's it's a community. It's, it's a community of people that have a certain outlook on life and, and care about the moment being a sacred time that we, that we make it as good as we can. You know, it's like live in the moment. That whole idea is very jamily-ish. That's what, what, what kind of makes this place great. So we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. We've been under the threat of demolition for three years now. We started with this idea, we'll just ride it till the wheels fall off. The impending close is one of those things that 
is a constant shadow hanging over us. I get asked almost every day, well, when is the game closing? When are they taking your building away? When are they gonna do this? We don't know. For all intents and purposes, we have a highly successful business. And because somebody wants apartments, they're just gonna scoop us out and throw us in the trash. And you can't remake the jam. There's no other place that feels like this. I don't wanna do it again if it's gonna be a low resolution copy. I don't know, I'm, it makes me sad. It sucks, you know, I mean, but what can you do? So the space may go away, you know, the body may die, but the spirit, you can't take that, that's not gonna go away. You know, we'll, we'll come sprinkle unicorn dust back on this place once in a while. It will live on forever in some fashion. Without too much conceit, I know what I'm doing and I know how to run this business. And I'm gonna be carrying the jam on my back. Its spirit will be in a little satchel with me forever. So anywhere that I go, I'm taking it with me. This place and all the people involved in this place have definitely revitalized the music scene in Gainesville in a way. Now Gainesville is on the map on all kinds of festival bands. They see Gainesville, they try to call, they want to make a stop here because we created an audience. We built it. It didn't exist before we got here. We can take credit for that. When we go, that'll still be here. So the music scene is, is healthier because of our presence. There's a momentum to it now that I think it will continue to carry on. Gainesville has a great music scene. It's not, the death of the jam isn't gonna cause, it's not gonna skip a beat. It may mourn a little bit. There may be a little backlash. There might be a little grumpy, there might be a little protest. There might be a little, some letters sent. But it's gonna continue, it's gonna be just fine. When it comes to closing down the jam, we could just, write it off, close it down, our lives would be a lot easier, a lot less stress, a lot less struggle. But I'll tell you what, none of us have any inclination to do that whatsoever because we love this place and if they want to tear it down, they can get their bulldozers and they can get their cranes or they can get whatever they want and I'll be standing on the fucking roof the day they come with the bulldozers, maybe with a sign, maybe with chains on, I don't know. But they're gonna have to they're gonna have to bring the bulldozers before we walk out of here. And there's there's not gonna be any any surrender. It's to the death. There's no quarter in this fight. People think us. And that, although it feels good, is humbling because it's backwards. I learned how to do this business because I had the opportunity that was given to me by this amazing community and this music scene. People like Flatland and Locochino and Savant Soul and Grit and all the other amazing bands that come through here that have trust, trusted us to, you know, to foster them and be a host for them and the Jamily and World Wednesday crowd and all the musicians that come to jam, all of those people are what make this happen. It's like thanking the paintbrush. The paintbrush is just the tool, it's the thing, but the, the artist holds the paintbrush and uses it to create something beautiful and the, the artist is the community that we have here in Gainesville. The artist, the person holding the paintbrush is everyone else. I'm a tool that comes in here and sweeps the floors and puts in a beer order and books bands, that, that's not, you know, I appreciate that, hey, thank you, thank you Paintbrush, thank you for, you worked well. So, I thank everyone else, really from the bottom of my heart, in the most humble way that I can say it, is that everyone else, the Jamily and the people in Gainesville have made the jam what it is, and I'm lucky to have given the opportunity to be part of this. <laughs>